Imagine you have a bug, not in software, not in the OS, not even in the bootloader or the kernel, but something deeper, embedded into the very logic of the CPU itself, a hardware vulnerability with no cure. Enter Ghostwrite, a direct CPU bug on one of the fastest RISC-V CPUs available. Let's get wired in. This is a Leety Pi 4A dev board. Think of it sort of like a Raspberry Pi, except it runs a RISC-V based CPU. It contains a Shantai C910 processor with draft spec vector instructions. And with just three lines of assembly, I can crash the system. So what's so bad about a CPU vulnerability? I mean, after all, you've probably crashed your system before. How is this any different? When a vulnerability occurs in software, the operating system, or even the kernel, these issues are generally easier to patch and mitigate. You can almost think of it like a pyramid of danger. As we go up the pyramid, it becomes increasingly more difficult to detect and fix these kinds of issues. Software bugs are on the bottom, then the operating system, then the kernel, then the bootloader, and at the very top, a hardware vulnerability. With something like Ghostwrite, not only are we talking about a hardware vulnerability, but we're talking about an architecture class of attack. It's not a side channel attack, there's no power manipulation or transient execution. The CPU actually implements an assembly instruction wrong. It's wild to think about, isn't it? There's actually a problem in the logic of the CPU itself. But how the heck did they find that? Let's step back a few months. At the CISPA Heimold Center for Information Security, a group of researchers had an idea. RISC-V is an open and easily accessible CPU specification, but it's still on the CPU manufacturers to implement it properly. With so many vendors out there, who's to say that none of them made a mistake? They theorized that by generating small programs, running them on different CPUs, and comparing the results, you could detect hardware defects automatically without the need for source code or emulators. This technique is known as differential fuzzing. Any deviation of instruction behavior, whether that be a system crash or an unexpected result, is a potential target. These misbehaving sequences can then be manually inspected and refined. Michael Schwartz, one of the faculty at CISPA, explains it like this. If four out of five hotel safes remain locked, and you enter 0000, but the fifth one springs open, you have reason to assume that something is awry with that one. So what exactly did the CISPA researchers find? This particular CPU, the Shantai C910, has faulty instructions inside the vector extension. As a side note, if you'd like to learn more about vector instructions and why they're useful, check out my other video on RISC-V vector extensions here. Anyway, as it turns out, you can use an illegally encoded instruction to write directly to physical memory instead of virtual memory. Other RISC-V CPUs with the same specification block this behavior, but the C910 allows it. This is a really severe vulnerability because user space programs should never be able to affect physical memory directly, only virtual memory. Let's trigger the bug. I'm going to open up my GitHub repository, which has all of the code available for you online, and let's go to our crash system example program. Now going over to the relevant portion of the assembly code, we have the vset vli instruction which sets up the vector engine state. Next, we fill up a vector register with copies of our single byte value. And now finally, we run a non-standard instruction that doesn't actually exist inside of the spec. And what this does is it ends up writing a single byte to physical memory in the address stored inside of the T0 register, not inside of a virtual address. And if we chain these instructions together and put them inside of a simple loop inside of our C code, we can easily crash the system by overriding physical memory. And let's show an example of that happening. I'm going to open up my connection to my board, and I have my example crash system program right here. And let's do dot slash crash system. And this is going through overriding to physical memory over and over and over again, starting at memory address zero. And you can see 
I have completely lost connection to my board, so the system is totally down. Pretty crazy, right? Now I'd like to demonstrate just how dangerous this type of bug is. As a malware researcher myself, normally running malicious software inside of a virtual machine is relatively safe. There are very few hypervisor escapes in the wild, but because this is a fault in the hardware of the CPU itself, none of these standard isolation methods help. I can run this faulty instruction inside a Docker container or even inside a VM, and with my POC code, it will still crash the host system. Okay, so crashing the system is interesting, but not very useful. Wouldn't it be more fun if we were to manipulate a user process? Being that we can write to any arbitrary physical memory address, it's pretty trivial to extrapolate this into modifying other processes. Now I have two example programs in here. One is going to be our target process, which is printing a value to the console, and the other is going to be our exploit process, which is going to modify that value by writing directly to physical memory. So let's open up our connection to the board and get that executing. Now I'm going to execute my target process which is continuously printing the value 42 to the console. And now let's execute the exploit process code, which takes in the virtual address of the value that you want to modify and the process ID of the target process. So on the back end, this is translating the virtual address provided to a physical address and then using that exploit code. So let's do exploit process and pass in the virtual address using our little helper function right there, as well as the process ID of the program we want to modify and enter that. Here we go. We have successfully overwrote the target process and changed the value to 43 by modifying physical memory. I mean, manipulating processes is cool and all, but there's something more dastardly we can do if we get a little creative. On its own, Ghostwrite can only write to memory, but this seemingly limited ability is immensely powerful in the right hands. If we modify the page tables in memory directly, we can manipulate the operating system itself. Remember, page tables translate virtual addresses into physical ones. I've made a video about how that works here if you're interested. Therefore, if we wrote to the right spot, we could get an accessible virtual address for any physical address. That means that we could now read any memory content from a user level process. The CISPA researchers demonstrated this by having one legitimate process ask for something sensitive, say an administrator password. The ghostwrite based read exploit fills the memory with page tables, modifies a random physical byte, checks for the difference, and then leaks the private string from the other process directly from user memory. Any sensitive data you have in RAM, passwords, credit cards, maybe even a Bitcoin address, can now be leaked from this hardware level bug. The mitigation for Ghostwrite on the C910 and C908 CPUs, if you can call it a mitigation, is pretty awful. Technically, disabling the vector extensions via the kernel will protect you, but that's kind of like saying you can't get in a car accident if you don't drive a car. There's a massive performance penalty when disabling the vector extensions, as much as 33% slower for memcopy operations. But what now? Okay, so hear me out. I don't think these vulnerabilities are a bad thing. Think of it this way. If you're a computer science or engineering student, for less than $100, you can play with a CPU vulnerability in the palm of your hand on a brand new ISA. How cool is that? Not only that, but we've barely scratched the surface of what's possible with CPU fuzzing. I'm super impressed by the work the CISPA researchers have performed, and I highly encourage you to read their full paper. But there's a lot of room to go. The new RISC-V CPUs are coming out every day. New, potentially vulnerable CPUs. It's absolutely fascinating to me that you can do this at home. You don't need any fancy research lab or special equipment. With some patience, some simple software tricks, and a little bit of luck, you can find a CPU vulnerability of your own. I'm sure there are plenty of other hardware vulnerabilities waiting to be discovered in the RISC-V space, especially with the relative immaturity of the vector extension. So what are you waiting for? Get out there, buy some weird CPUs, and start fuzzing. You never know what you might find. Until next time, Glory Wired out. Ah!